So I've just talked about the process costing, and we are saying that uh, we normally produce similar items in a continuous production process through a series of steps. And I have already said that uh, the process costing is the one which is basically tested um, most in our in our past papers, and is the one that we want to base our efforts in. And in this case, we we have to be looking on uh, how do we normally accumulate the cost, and we have said the costs are basically accumulated from step to the other, uh, the production process uh, progresses. Basically, we have to be understanding that uh, the output in process one becomes the input in process two. And also in each process, there is a cost in which we have to be incurring. And that is where we are saying, in this method, the items must be in different forms or in different production processes stroke stages. Now, I would be able to share with you the features or characteristics of process costing, but basically, um, most importantly, think that we can be able to look at the terms used. What are the terms used here? And in this case, we start with the normal laws. You ask yourself, what is a normal loss? And we say, this is a loss, is a loss, which is expected to occur, which is expected to occur, right? This is a loss which is basically expected to occur due to the factors, right, which is normally expected to occur at the beginning, sorry, at the beginning of production process. at the beginning of production process. Now, in this case, we need to understand that it is normally cost. It is caused by the factors uh, which are beyond the factors which are beyond uh, management control. It is basically caused by the factors which are beyond the management control. I can give an example of uh, um, evaporation and so on. Number two, we discuss about abnormal loss. Abnormal loss, um, it is a loss which was not expected to occur. It is a loss which was not expected to occur, right? Which was not expected to occur from the beginning of the process. From the beginning, from the beginning of the process. From the beginning of process. And in this case, we say that uh, it is normally caused by the factors. It is caused by the factors. Um, by the factors which can be avoided normally caused by the factors which can be avoided in the production process in the process in the production process for example we can be able to give uh, shortage of material being one of the abnormal loss factor and uh, you know that uh, those are the issues. You can be able to, to control to ensure that the organization is having enough materials for production purposes. Number three, we look on the abnormal gain. And you ask, you ask yourself, what is an abnormal gain? And we say it basically arises uh, where the actual loss is less than the expected losses, right? Arises where the expected losses are less, expected losses are less than, right? The expected losses or the actual losses are less. It should be the actual, actual losses are less than expected losses. There is another thing, number four here, 
where we are going to be discussing about scrap. And when you look on the scrap, basically, we are looking on the discarded materials with a recoverable value. We are just saying they are discarded material. They are discarded material. They are discarded material with recoverable value. With the recoverable, with the recoverable value, with the recoverable value. Now, those are the terms that you need to be knowing um, under the uh, the costing, under the uh, process costing. Now, I just want to do an illustration, um, one or two, so that you can be able to understand how uh, these questions are basically done. Um, I just want to start with a good question here. A question which is basically tested on August 2021. Uh, question number 5A, so we can go there very quickly. So we have a question tested here. August 2021. Where are you? Management accounting. So we have good questions here. One, uh, we have said, we are discussing about uh, a question. With, they normally bring this question at the end so that uh, we become confused at the end of the day. This is May. So let us go for August. Basically, is our September here. So let us go there and we check right at the end. So the question is here. And the question is basically reads that uh, double B limited manufactures a chemical that passes through three production processes. Namely, we are talking about process one, two, and three. In the month of June 2021, 6,000 liters of the basic material raw materials priced at 240,000 shillings were introduced in process one. Subsequently, the following costs were incurred. So you see examiners given you the totals for um, accumulative totals for the three processes, but he has already a portion for process one is how much two and three. Now, additional information we have been told, the normal output per process was estimated as follows. So the output, if it's 90%, we ask the 10%. The 10% is for the normal loss. And you can see the process 2 is 5%, and for process 3 is 8%. So we have been told the output of each process was given as follows. The liters processes given there. But number three, we have been told the losses uh, in each process re uh, represented scrap, which could be sold at the following prices. So price per unit, we are being given process one to three. But number four, we have been told there was no stocks of the materials or to a work in progress at the beginning or end of the period. Five, the output of each process passes directly to the next process and finally to the finished goods. But examiner is talking about the production overhead is absorbed by each process on a basis of 50% of the, of the cost of the direct labor. So we are being given a good requirement there to calculate process one account, two account, three accounts. We come up with abnormal loss account, and then we also need to come up with abnormal gain account. Now, you are being given a question like this. Uh, this is how you're supposed to be approaching the question. So this is how the question is being approached. So in this case, we are doing September 2021. So let me wrap everything here. So basically here we are looking on a, a question of September 2021, question number 5B. September 2021. Question number 5B. 
And in this case, examiner is telling us in the past requirements to come up with a process one account. So process one account. What you're supposed to be asking yourself, this is just like debit and credits. You normally have accounts here. We start with details. We go to the units. We have cost per unit. And then to nakuanga na amount. You repeat on the credit side, we have we have debits, uh, details, sorry. We have units. We have cost per unit. Later on, we have the amount. Now, remember in process one, we are starting with input. An examiner was able to tell you that uh, there is an input here of 6,000 liters, right? 6,000 liters amounted to 240,000. Any other cost which was incurred in process one includes, so you just go back to your question, so when I look at it, there is some cost which were incurred there, right? So we start with each cost. Examiners told us that um, in process one, there is an added material, right? We have added material there. So how much is our added material? We are being given in process one, examiners given you 30,000, right? In process two, uh, another cost that we are incurring here, it is called direct labor. So how much is our direct labor? Examiners told us that the direct labor is equivalent to one ten thousand. Right? The other thing that I'm looking at here is the direct expenses. Or we can go to the additional, oh. the last additional information. We are discussing Direct labor is 40,000. Sorry? Good, it is 40,000. 40,000. It is 40,000. Let us calculate our production overheads where direct the exam is telling us is 50% of the direct labor. That translates to 20,000, right? And then we have direct expenses. Our direct expenses amount to 6,000 here. Now, when you go on the credit side, you normally record output. So examiner has already given you the outputs because already in additional information to the outputs are there. So in process one, we are being given 5,300, but examiner has not given you the cost per unit. I have to be calculating it. Then we go to the normal laws under the additional information number one. We have been told that the output was 90%, right? It was 90%. So it means the 10%, the 10% of the input was our normal loss. This translates to 6,000. But the examiners told you that in additional number three, that these losses were scrapped at how much? Process one, we have been given 20. This translates to 12,000. Is it 600? 600. 600, sorry. 600. Now, from there, we we just be looking. We have to be looking on the balancing of the 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 units in the debit and credits, and it means the balance which remains here lies for normal loss because this is totaling to six thousand here, yeah? right? And then here we also have to balance our unit to six thousand. So the difference I know is a hundred shillings. We don't have the cost per unit. So what I have to be telling you, to get the cost per unit, you have to be taking, right? We have to be taking process costs, right? Normally called the process cost, minus the normal loss cost. We divide by input, these are units, minus the normal loss units or so. Now, the process cost is just you doing this total and uh, determining it, it is how much, how much is that total there? How much is that total? We are discussing about 240, right? Plus 70,000, 
right? Plus a, a 26, I can see is around 26. I'm getting 336,000. I'm getting 336,000. Now, in this case, I just need to say 336,000. Normal loss cost is this one. You are being given 12, uh, you have already calculated and gotten 12,000. The inputs are 6,000 units. The normal loss units are 600. So how much is this? So 336 minus 12, you get 324,000. We divide by, this I can see is 5,400, right? So let me divide by 4.4, and I'm getting Kenya shillings. 65 units. So I just place 60 here and also here 60. So this translates to 6,000. How much is the first one? 5,300 times 60, getting 318,000. So what is the total here? So 318,000 plus 12,000 plus 6,000. This translates to 336,000. That is how you do it. That is how you do it. Then from there, let us do process two account here. Process two account. Remember, the output in process one is this, becomes the input in my process two. So here we talk about 5,300, right? Totaling to, totaling to how much? So the first one will be, uh, the, our input will be totally to 318,000. 318,000. Let us look on the costs. The cost here. The added cost we have, 40 for the added material. Right? Direct labor amounts to 50,000. Then it means the production over it is 25% because it's 50%, uh, 25,000. Then the direct expense is amounting to 1,600. 1600. So you ask yourself, how much is our total for the process cost? So it means it is 318,000 plus 40,000, right? Plus 50,000 plus 25,000 plus 1600. This translates to 434, 600. What about on this credit side? It does not mean that we are going to be having the abnormal losses all, the, all, all, all along. So in this case, let me see whether we have the abnormal losses. Now, what I have to be factoring is that uh, our output now is 5,000 under the additional information too. Examiner has given you 5,000. The normal loss will be 10% of the input, 530 or 5,300. Translate to 530, right? 530. So how much is our how much is our abnormal loss? It means our process two account. No, it is not 10%, but uh, the, the rate is in process two. When I look on additional information number one, process two, because the output is 95%, it, it means 5% is our 5% is our normal loss so 0 0.05 times 5300 translating to 265 so it is it is scrapped by how much additional information number three we have been told is 44 so times 44 we get 11660 11660 so balance your units here because i can see here it is where it falls less now, in this case, we just talk about 5,300, and we say 5,000 plus 265, right, minus 5,300. We are getting 35 units. 35 units is our normal loss units. Now, from there, we have to be looking on the cost per unit. We said we take the process cost. In our case here, we are discussing about 434,000. 600. The normal loss cost, we have 11,660. You divide by our input, which is 5,300 units, minus right the normal loss, which is 265. So in this case, I just say 434,600 
minus 11,660. Here we get 422. 422,940. You divide by 5300 minus 265. We get uh, 5035. How much per unit? So 422,940. I divide by my answer. And I'm getting Kenya shillings 84 per unit. So you just need to, to put 84, and then you put 84. So 84 times 5,000, we are getting 420,000. Then 35 times 84, getting 2940. Look on whether the debit and credit sides of yours balances. So plus 420,000 plus 11,660. 11,660. We are getting 434,600. Let us go now to process three. Process three now. And in this case, my input is my output in process two, which is 5,000, right? So it is 5,000 there. Then we have the total cost, which we have 420,000, right? The added material in process three, we have 17.5. The other one, we have 20,000. Ah, yeah, 20 here, 50% of 20 is 10,000. And then the last one, we have 9,300. We have 9,300 there. Now, we have to be looking on the output in process three. And in this case, we have been told the process three, the output was 92%, meaning 8% 8 of 5,000 is your normal loss uh, proportion. So 0 0.08 times 5,000, we get 400. So it means this one is the highest. So what is our output here in this case? The output in process three, we are given 4,700, right? This translates to 51. 51, balance your unit. It means here we have abnormal gain. Our abnormal gain here is 1,000, 100, sorry. So in this case, the total unit should be 5,100. So let us calculate the cost per unit. The cost per unit now. So before the abnormal gain, what is our total here? So we talk about 420 plus 17, 17.5 plus 10, 20, 30 plus 9.3. This translates to 476, 800. 476, 800, right? So that is 476, 800. Four seventy six. Is it four seventy six? Let me repeat again. Four twenty thousand plus seventeen five hundred plus twenty thousand plus ten thousand, right? Plus ninety three hundred. Yes, it should be four seventy six eight hundred. That is the total. We are excluding the abnormal gain. So we take four seventy six. 800 minus the normal loss. So the normal loss was scrapped at how much? We are we are being given 65. So in this case, I just put here 65. So 400 times 65, we get how much? 26,000 here, right? So here we subtract 26,000. Then we divide by our input is 5,000 minus the normal loss, which is 400. So 476, 800 minus my answer. I'm getting 450, 800. We divide by 5,000 minus 400, getting 4,600. So how much are we getting? So 450, 800 divide by my answer. I'm getting around 98 per unit.
So I just need to put here 98, and here I put 98. This translates to 9800. So to get my total, I just say 476, 800 plus 9800. We are getting 486. 486, 600 there. Let us go on the credit side. We just say 4700 times 98. Getting 460. 600. Right? So just add 26,000. We are getting 486. 486. 600. 600. That is how you normally do these accounts. Look on the areas. For instance, when you look on the abnormal gain, because we have to be preparing these accounts, the abnormal gain is on the credit side. So it means this cost should be on the, it is on the debit side. When you go to the abnormal gain account, it should be on the credit side and, and vice versa. So let us do the, the three accounts, whether the examiner is asking you to calculate for the normal losses. You can think the normal losses are on the credit side. So this is how you normally do them. So let us start with the abnormal gain. Abnormal gain account, right? It normally looks like this. So you can see those figures that we were getting there were on the, uh, the credit side. So here you normally say, and it appears only in the process three. So we just say process three account. Process three account, how much do we have? Uh, the total for the abnormal gain was 9,800. Was 9,800, right? So in this case, there are some of the cash in which we are going to be generating, by the way. Cash, because we are going to be scrapping this. So we talk about 100 units for the abnormal gain. Then we multiply by the scrap value for process 3. And in this case, the scrap value for process 3, we are given 6,500. 65, sorry. This translates to 6,500. So where is the difference going? The difference that is, is uh, arising there is going to the profit and loss account. It is normally goes to the profit and loss account. I'm going to get to by the way. That account balances in that aspect. You have to be looking how much am I able to write off. And in this case, we have 6,500 in which you are going to be receiving in terms of cash. These have no more gain, right? So the difference is going to be going to profit and loss account. So we are discussing about 9800 minus 6500, getting 33. That one goes straight to profit and loss account. Let us go and do abnormal loss account and you do the same. The abnormal losses were on the process one, process one account, and also we had process two account, right? So process one account were how much? We got 400 units, we got 600. Is this 600 or 6,000? It should be 6,000 for process one. And then the process two account, we were able to get 2940. How much can we cash? So in this case, we talk about cash for process one. And uh, I can see we are discussing about 100, but we can be able to, Cash by 44. This translates to 4,400. Then also we can talk about cash in process two. How many units were there for the uh, abnormal? In this case, we have 2940, right? 35, sorry, 35. And then the, uh, the cashing amount is 44. So that five times 44, getting 1540. Where the difference going? Where the difference going? So in this case, we are saying the difference should be going to the profit and loss account, 94 here. Right? So what is the total here? The total here is 8940. And those should be the case here. Process right. one was 20, Mali. Sorry? Was 20, 100 times 20. Process one is 20, thank you. This translates to 2,000. Good. Now, in this case, what is the P&L account? 8940 minus 2,000 minus 1540. Getting 5,400. Getting 5,400 going to the P&L account. 
Now, what about if the examiner was asking you to calculate the normal loss account? The normal loss account, you do the same. If the examiner was asking you to calculate the normal loss account, you do the same. So the normal losses in our processes falls on the credit side. So here they fall on the uh, on the debit side. We start with process one. Process one account, right? What are the normal losses? The normal losses was amounting to uh, process one. We have uh, 12,000. Yeah, we have 12,000, yeah. Process two, process two account was totaling to um, normal loss 11,660. Right. Process three, Process three account was totaling how much? The process three account was 26,000, if I'm not wrong. But you can cash some units here. Yeah? For example, process one account was amounting to 600 units, right? Cash here. So we are talking about 400 units. What is the amount for the scrap value for process one? You have told me is 20, getting 8,000. You are getting 8,000. Cash the process two, right? How many units for normal loss? Process two was 265 times, times 44. So 265 times 44, you are getting how much? 11,660. Good. Then process three, you also cash, right? How many units were here? Mm-hmm. Good. Process one, how many units? I can see there we have made uh, it's wrong. It should be 6, 000, uh, 600 here, yeah? 12,000. 12,000 there. Yeah? Process three, how much is the process three? In process three, we have the normal loss was 400. 400. 400 times 65, getting 26,000. This one balances automatically, right? So what are the totals there? 12,000 plus 11,660, right? Plus 26,000. We are getting 49,660. 49,660. 49,660. That is how it balances. So let us proceed to... Another illustration, right? Another illustration. And the next question we can do for May 2017. I think it is there. May 2017 question. There is a question there. Let me check which question uh, May 2017. Let me check from the past paper. But it is within 2017 period. Let me check. <clears throat> it's November. Is it November? Okay. For 2017, there are So we have been told Tegemia Limited manufactures a product which yields three joint products, namely H and T. 
So the joint products um, are then processed further in a common process, which consists of two consecutive stages. So the data below relate to the month of August 2017. We have process one and two. The direct materials we are being given there, right? The conversion cost given, then the scrap value of the normal loss per unit given for each process. Additional information, number one, the output in process one is transferred to process two and amounts to 26,000 units. The output in process two consists of three joint products as follows. We have quantity H, N, and T. Then the normal loss for the both processes one and two is 10%. The unit selling prices for H, N, and T are 180, 200, and 300 respectively. All joint products are, so, are sold as soon as they are produced. We have been told the sales value method of joint cost apportionment is used. We are going to be applying it. Now, in this case, we have been told, number one, to come up with a process one account, two account, and then we come up with the income statement for the joint products. You can see it is a 14 mark question. Now, in this case, I just want to start by computing the process accounts or the process accounts. And the... Uh, once I, I, I go to, uh, you have told is November. So the question is for November 2017, question number 5B. This question 5B, it should be. So in this case, um, I'm going just to be preparing the process one account. So let me start with the process one account, right? We do process one account. Process one account. We have details. We have units. Cost per unit. We have amount. We have details. We have units. We have cost per unit. Then it can amount up in mission. Here. Now, the details, number one, we have to be knowing in process one, we can only have input, which we have to be putting for production for process one. And in this case, examiners told us that, um, uh, examiners told us the direct materials which were able to be injected here uh, amounts to 30,000 units. Uh, the cost per unit is 20. This translates to 600,000. The other cost that we are incurring in process one, by the way, it is the conversion costs. This is very simple. Conversion costs, which amount to 765,000. 765,000. Now, from that end, we don't have any other costs. Let us look on the, our output. Now, the output in process one is given in additional information of one, where we have been told the output in process one is transferred to process two and will be amounted to 26,000. What is my normal loss? We said do you have to be factoring the proportion given 10%. You multiply by the input, which is 30, 30,000, translates to 3,000 here. The balance is abnormal loss which is 1,000, and our units have already balanced to 30,000. So it means also here, it is 30,000. Now, the normal loss is going to be scrapped by how much in process one? I can see even the examiner is giving you five shillings. So this translates to 15,000. So just come straight and you calculate the cost per unit to finish your calculation. We said you take the process cost, my process cost here, I can see is 13, uh, 1365. 1365,000. So you just need to take 1365,000 minus the normal loss, which is 15,000. You divide by, right? We are looking on our input, which is 30,000 minus the normal loss, which is 3,000. So how much is this? How much is this? We are talking about 1350. You divide by 27,000, 27,000. So let me take my calculator and do that calculation, 1350. I divide by 27, getting 50 shillings. I'm getting 50 shillings per unit. Imagine I got two upper 50, and also you place here 50. 
So this translates to 50,000, right? Then the other one is 26,000 times 50, getting 1.3 million. Look on whether the it balances, we should be automatically balancing. So 1.3 million plus 15,000 plus 50,000. We are getting 1365. You don't force it. 1365,000. Let us go to uh, process two because the examiner is talking about process one and process two now. Now, under the process two, we say take the input of process one. Now, the, the output of process one, which is 26,000, right? And then become the input in process two. So this translates 1.3 million, right? The conversion cost in process two, examiner has given us 2262, 2262,000. So all of these changes. So how much is this? Let me check. 1.3 million, right? Plus 2262,000. It comes to 35, 3562. Now, what is our output here? What is our output? Now, on the credit side, we have to be looking on the output. And here, the examiner is saying us that uh, the units which are going to be produced here, they are joint products. Right? So we have H, N, and T. H, N, and T. So this translates to how much? Now, that is additional information number two, right? The quantity in units, the first one is 10,000. Second one is 7,000. Then for T, we talk about 6,000. Calculate your normal loss, which you have been told is 10% of 26,000. This translates to 2,600, right? Then from that end, can we be able to balance our units? Yes, we can be able to do that. We can be able to balance our units. Now, in this case, these units, um, when you look at this and this one, they have no more loss faults here. So it means I need to be balancing my, my units here is 26,000. But how much is our no more loss? So put here 26,000 and you're balancing, uh, the balancing figure becomes your normal loss. So 26,000 minus 2,600 minus uh, 13,000 minus 10,000 translates to 400. The normal loss is scrapped by how much? Let me check there. We have been told the normal loss in process two is 20. This is 52,000. So you start by calculating the cost per unit, but it's not the one that you're going to be using there since you are dealing with the joint products. Cost per unit. Our cost per unit, we take the process costs, right? How much is this? 1.3 plus 2,262,000. 2, we get 3,562, sorry. So that 562,000, Minus the normal loss, which is 52,000 costs, you divide by 26,000 minus 2,600. How much is this? Minus 52,000. We divide by 26,000 minus 2,600. We get 150. Remember the additional information, the last one. Examiner is saying us, is telling us to use the sales value method of joint products. So the first thing that you have to be doing, calculate the apportionment of sales value, um, the apportionment, the, the total cost now. What is the total cost of the joint products? In this case, I just say, let us take the 10,000 plus 7,000 plus 6,000. This translates to 23,000. Then this figure you multiply by 150, right? How much are you getting here? We are getting that 450,000, which will be used for apportionment. That is the figure and the total amount that we are supposed to be uh, apportioning there using the sales value basis method. Now, already because we know this, let me wrap this side. Right? Because the examiner is telling us to use the sales 
uh, value apportionments. So the first thing is to get your cells, right? So let us first calculate our cells. And in this case, we, we are dealing with three products, H, N, and T. So in this case, the unit C is 10,000, 7,000, 6,000. Each unit is sold at how much? Kila unit now on a pallet in additional information number four. The unit selling prices for the first one is 180, right? Here we talk about 200 and here we talk about 300. So here is 1.8 million. Here is 1.4 million. And then here we are talking about 1.8 million. So what is the total? So 1,800 plus 1,400 plus 1,800. Getting 5 million. Right? Now once you calculate this, right? Calculate your percentages, right? Let us calculate our percentages here. In this case, the first one would be 18, 1,800 you divide by the total, it's just like you're calculating the weights. So 1,800 divided by 5,000, which is 36%. So it means even this is 36%. And then this one, because it has to be totaling to um, one, even you can do it, 1,400 divided by 5,000. And even you can balance, you can just get 28%. Because the total should be 100% there. Let us apportion the cost that we have gotten there. And our cost was 3450. 3450. Times 3450. What are we getting here? We are getting process two accounts. Account costs. So the first one will be, let me start with 0 0.28 because it's the one that is in my calculator. So that 450,000, getting 966,000, right? The other one is 0 0.36 times 3450,000 ,000, and we are getting 1242. Also, here is 1242,000. The first one we are talking 1242,000. The second one we are talking about 966,000. Then the third one is 1242,000. Then the abnormal gain multiply with 150. So 400 times 150, we are getting 60,000 here. How much is your total? So the three I know they are totally to that 450. Right, plus 52, plus 60. I'm getting 35, 62,000. 35, 62,000. That is how you normally do when the examiner is asking you to use the sales value, right? Apportionment method. That is how you do your calculations. Now, examiner can see there is another requirement is asking us to compute what? The profit, right? Just take your revenues to calculate the profit there. You take your revenues, H, N, and T. So the revenue we have 1,800, right? Here we have 1,400, and here we have 1,800, minus the cost. The cost we have, they are these ones that we are able to calculate, 1,242,000. The other one is 966, 1,242,000. What is your profit here? So in this case, our profit amounts to 1800 minus 1242. We get 558. Here we have 558. Then for N, we have 1400 minus 966. We have 434,000. That is how you calculate your profit also. That is how you calculate your Profits. Any question? Any question up to that point? Any question? The other thing that we can be able to do, although we cannot do it right now, maybe tomorrow morning, the other thing that we can do 
there are things that we can be able to, or that we, we will be able to do tomorrow. We will be able to do units with different degree different degree of completion units with different degree of completion so it means that uh, different units the production in some cases or instances could not be completed at the end of the period in such a case there is no opening or closing work in progress and in this case we normally say the cost per unit is normally determined using the equivalent units but we normally have only two methods two methods are used two methods are used one we talk about first in first out method number two we have weighted we have weighted average method. Weighted average method. Only two methods here. The first one and the second one. These are the only methods that we are going to be using tomorrow uh, to be able to understand how can we be able to do the units with different degree of completion. So we can be able to stop at that point and see you tomorrow. Uh, before this one, because the, the, the area that we have already covered it, 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 it can be used up to the uh, by ATD students, but now from here, they are excluded. Syllabus A may share hapo you. Hapa chini now is for only um, CPA students, for only CPA students. So if you are doing your ATD, the upper side. Now from here, going forward, you are excluded. You are excluded. You are not supposed to do this. This is not applicable in your syllabus. So if we don't have any other question, we can stop at that point. And they see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Good day.